here, woodworking master class, and finishing off this chair frame that came to me yesterday. And um, I've got to build a new frame for it. So I thought I might as well bring in on the end part. Why isn't that working? Today, Steve here, woodworking master class, and finishing off this part of the chair which I started yesterday in the stream. So hoping, hoping that it works. Uh, the stream that is, not the chair. I'm sure I can get the chair together. Um, I cut the, the timber yesterday and for those of you who can remember, there was one piece that I thought was really gorgeous on the top, but it had a real manky bit of um, spalting on the inside or inclusion, bark inclusion. So what I've done is cut a bit off of here and then put it in here so pretty well got the same grain and, and colour happening. So I've got to cut that down on a bandsaw and then we'll hand plane that flat. That had a little crack in it so I just put a little bit of leftover um, epoxy I had on it there. So we will see how it's going. I'm just looking over there to see if anything's happening. A rotten, rotten uh, feed rate as usual. Oh, Dean, every time you go in there and complain, they go, oh, it's not my problem, I can't help it. Oh, I wouldn't mind paying more if they could guarantee me a better um, internet connection, but we'll see. I'm just getting the chat out, that's why I'm on here. I'm not being rude. I'm trying not to be rude anyway. There we go, we're live. And... Oh, I've got to get, got to get that out, out of the way and then it will be all good to go. Alrighty, um, so I, I thought several ways of cutting the tenons and I decided I'd use a dado uh, blade in my table saw, so I'll take you over there very shortly. To do the tricky ones, I could have used the H&T Gordon Moving Philister, which, which I reckon is one of the nicest machines, well, tools that I've got. It is absolutely an extraordinary piece of work and I love it, but uh, couldn't use it because it's on a, these tenons are on a slight angle, so it didn't sort of work too well. Um, well, that fell down. Could have used just a saw and a chisel. Could have used a rebate plane, but I decided on using what I've got there, which is gonna be a lot quicker. Um, so I'll take you over there and then what I've got to do. Then I've got to cut the tenons on the side rails. What I've got to get, do first is cut the tenons on the ends of the legs. The legs look like that with little short tenons on them. So I've just got to go and clean those out. The mortises I actually did on a slot mortiser I've got. It was so easy just to set them up and run a whole lot through at once. So let's go over to the table saw. It should be there. There we go. All right. Let's grab another bit of masking tape. I might need it in the future. You never know. So what I've done, I've set the depth to the depth that I want on the saw to give me the, the right tenon. And then I've marked, I've done one here to show you. Okay, there's one there. And how I got that was I worked out where I wanted to have it. And then I set the table to that angle, then moved it up onto the blade here, and then brought it back and put a bit of masking tape here where the end of the leg is. So when I do my next one, all I've got to do is make sure I've got the leg facing the right way, put it on here, slide it up to that piece of masking tape, turn on the dolly, turn on the saw and run it through. And there you have the right half a tenon on the right angle.
But again, to prove it wasn't a fluke. Done. Now what I have to do is change the angle going the other way. And I'll wait until that's all before I go near it. So now I have to have the angle going this way. Hang on. Which way? Yeah, that way. So what I'll do is I'll get the original table leg. And I'll put it in the floating miter box. Now what you can do, if you don't want to take it up to the blade, you use the straight edge here of your table insert and get it parallel to that. Once both sides, I'm going to try it up here, we've got a bit more meat. Once both sides are parallel, just by feeling with your finger, look. Don't knock it like I just did. Lock it off. And that's the right angle. Bring it back and then slide it up to where the blade comes into the shoulder of that tenon and then pull it back and reposition your tape. And just to make sure we get it in the same every time, this one just occurred to me. Just in case you take it parallel to the edge or square, just mark with a pencil where that leg's got to go. So now we put this one in here, mark that. So the edge of the leg is up against the tape and those two marks. Dusty. There is another way I'll show you. We'll see how accurate this is. Okay, that's just a smidgen. Smidgen out. So what we'll do, we'll do all the ones like that and then we'll go back and correct it on the other side. That's all of them. I'll show you how to correct it. I'm only just a smidgen, smidgen out. It's not that bad, and I don't know if it is worth correcting, actually. Let me have a look. Look, I don't know if I'm going to lose any sleep over that. Uh, no, I don't think I'll lose any sleep over that. It's um, pretty 
pretty darn close. And I think I'll clean it up with a chisel when we come to put the put it together. What I was going to do was if you over the mark and you go a little bit too deep, continue that and then when you've finished, get the deeper side and put a square over it and then mark it with a knife and then go back to the saw and line up the blade with where the knife mark is and that'll give you a nice parallel. Bits is easier because you've actually got a, um, a stop you can put down, but longer bits you can't. So there you go. Right now I've just got to run these two rails, and I don't know if they've been cut to length or whatever. Oh, I can't remember what I did yesterday. G'day, T Bone, mate. Thoroughly enjoyed that this morning. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Jared, g'day, Andy. Good morning. Uh, Corey, I saw you teach and had to tune in for a few. Well, thanks, Corey. I appreciate that. Um, what are we doing? All right, this. Okay, these are cut to size. So what I've got to do now is just cut these tenons on the ends. And for that, we shall go back over the saw and set it up again. I want it square because I'm just doing square tenons. Uh, square that up to the there. I never trust. I never trust um, these gauges on these spider boxes. They are so often not as as you would like. Okay, so now, same, same, find out what size the tenon is. The blade, the, the thickness of the tenon is all the same. So we'll just run it. Mmm. Actually, I could run that to the end of the table. I think that's that's pretty, pretty darn close to the end of the table. How far out am I? Oh, I'm going to run that to the end of the table. So I'm going to square to the end of the table here. And that should... Where's a bit of, bit of wood? There you go. Put it up to there. And that should just about be awesome. Um, what do I need? I'll come up there, that's good there. I don't know. That's on the end. These are both the same size. Which they are, yep. I'll just take it to the end of the table. Should be right. move actually when I'm doing that.
And I think that's it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Oh, I've got to clean that other bit off too. Andy, I apologise if I fall asleep. <laughs> oh, I haven't had a rant yet. I should. Oh, I'll have a rant about the internet provider. Absolutely. Um, all right, we'll go over the bandsaw, just trim this bit off here, and then we can hand plane it. So, what I can do there is I can flick this over and then spin this around. There you go. And we'll see it. We go. I'll even do it this way so you can, you can see it. Um, actually, I might go that way. I don't want to get that close, so I dig into the timber. But we'll see. I'll put the dis disty dusty on again. I'm blind here. Woo! <laughs> Couldn't get much closer than that, I don't think. Okay. Oh. I was going to, I should have been streaming earlier and I apologise for that, but we had, um, oh, not, not an emergency. What happened? We're on water tanks here. In other words, we don't get town water. We have to use rainwater and we've got big tanks in the ground that collect it for us. And one of the tanks emptied, um, which means we had no water and I had to switch over to the other tank which normally isn't an issue, but it was because it's got silt on the bottom about that deep and my pickup pipe that pulls the water must have been there because I was just getting coming through the taps. So I had to shorten the pickup pipe and re-weld all sorts of other pipes. And uh, it's all good now though. We have nice clean water again. I don't know how big the tanks are. I should work it out. One's 10,000. One might be 20,000 litres or something. They don't know. Uh, G'day, Nathaniel. How are you, mate? Here we go. We'll go down here so you can see me. Having a go with this. And we can do this so you can see me there too. Close, close, close. That's very close. Dropping in. Oh, I love this plane. Whoop. It's a Lee Nelson number three ductile bronze. Just absolutely a sweetheart to use. Got my train tracks here. Eh? Well, 
ba ba da bum ba da dee dum. Okay. That looks pretty good. And that one. Pretty good. I'll just take one. Cut off there. Do oh, I know it's good? There's one thing I love more than anything, especially in my workshop, when I reach for a plane, I know it's set and I know it's sharp. Okay. Just knock the machining marks off this. It's all good. This one will clean up. I know I don't use hand tools a lot recently. I really do love using them. Here, just, just for fun. Just for fun. Here's something you won't see. I, well, I won't give you a 100% guarantee, but I can give you a pretty good guarantee. I'll even use the number one. There you go. That's the number one Stanley. I don't know how old it is. They stopped making them in the 40s. Okay, that one's done, that one's done. There are the arms. So now I'm going to go back to, whoops, the, um, do the legs and then clean up the tent. use this all the time, especially when I was box making, and then I found out how much they were worth, and ha, ah, don't use it as much now, it's nice to know it's there though, in case we ever need it. Um, I wanted to make a scroll on the uh, violin scroll. And I've got to tell you, it wasn't pretty. It took me three days to get that far. And then the penny dropped and I worked it out. So what I'll do later on, I'll actually do a video on how to do that because there's, there's some videos out there, but they're not very helpful, believe me. There was one step-by-step -step doing a violin scroll. All right, get your timber. Then you've got to mark out, no, then you've got to buy a, um, a template and mark it out on your timber. The next part was once you've carved your scroll, now you clean it up. And I'm thinking, oh, look, I'm not real bright, but I'm sure there's a couple of steps between when you draw it on the timber and when you finish scrolling it out. But it did took me, I think it was three days and a couple of sleepless nights but I worked it out and I can't use a template. I'm trying to find something here. I can't use a template because I want to put it on an Appalachian dulcimer 
And the scroll I'm using is bigger than a violin or viola, but smaller than a cello. So, then, I had to learn how to draw a scroll. And, again, not much information out there, but I found this Irish fella, and he did it. I thought, how easy so when I do the video, I'll let you into all those little nuances. Look at that, the bench is tidy. Unbelievable. All right, now. Um, that can go, that can go. This can go here. I don't know where there's a claw. I might just clean these up on the... Yeah, I might just... Might, I might not know what I'm doing. Um, G'day John, how are you? Might as well go all the way reupholster the chair or do a reproduction from scratch. Uh, no, I know he's got a bit of sentimental value to it, John, I think. In the, his wife is an upholsterer, so that's easy peasy done. Although I'm thinking of making one for my dearly beloved and um, just putting canvas in it. I reckon it would work a treat. Oh, what am I trying to do? Um, here we go. Just want to get a size of these dowels. There you go. So that's going to be that deep. Well, I think I might just go over to the bandsaw. No, not the bandsaw, the um, table saw. So we'll go back over there. And I'm going to rip a bit of timber as wide as I need it. Uh, yeah, that looks like... Ah, oh, can't! Because I've got my dado blade in there. Wait a minute. Um, no, it's all right. We'll just change the dado. Out. Put the other one back in. It's all good. I don't think I'm using the dado anymore. No, I've just got a couple of more um, things to do. And then I finish. It's all right. I'm talking to myself, I know. Occupational hazard. Wrong size. Let's try this size. Here you go. Okay. Safety tip is turn the saw off before you do this. I've got the switch behind me, so I've done that. And I'll just pull these off. There we go. Oh. I haven't used Dado blades. Oh, well, I'll put it this way. I've been. Doing woodwork for years now. Um, furniture for over 30. Um, and only in the last 12 months, 18 months, have I ever started using Dado blades because, to tell you the truth, they frighten me. But once I started using them, I think they're absolutely brilliant. is with this I'll get this nut on with it which would be really good because if not it goes in a great big bed of sawdust although although having said that I've done it I've done it before so I actually do have a telescopic magnet that I can just go down there and pick it up 
<laughs> you learn, you do, you learn. Okay. I'll just put these because if not, they get knocked on the floor. So there's uh, two sizes I'm using. I've got three sizes, but these are three mil. That's a three mil. That's a two point two mil. That's a three. That's a three. And the support blades are three as well. And then I think I've got a one and a half as well. So you can get up to 21, 22 mil data. You can't really go much larger. If you do, you run out of spindle on the um, on the motor. Whoops, what's going on here? It's got me beat how these things go out of whack, but you got to pretty much tune them every time you put them in. Okay. Good there. Whoops, wrong size. There we go. You don't want to have them so they're so low you get caught in the outfeed, but you don't want to have them high so they catch you when you're in feeding. this. Don't need this. All that. Oh, yeah, we'll go this way. No, we won't. We'll go this way. Okay, 
Now, if I'm right, this should be the same width as that tenon. A little bit. Oh. There's a. Uh... Ah, that's all right. That will be fine. So what I'm going to do is... Use that bit of timber to cut and put it up against the shoulder there and score there with a knife. I don't know what's happened today, I'm putting things back. And I have to score one edge, basically. So it's like that. Oh, you can do too if you're feeling good. <laughs> it's the OCD side of me. G'day, Louise! Hello! Now this one I'm a bit shorter, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to cut the ends off anyway. Alright, so I'll go over to the bandsaw and just trim those off. What have we got? T-Bone, Steve, ever seen the American 90s TV show Furniture to Go? The two O's restored the upholstered furniture. Very entertaining, funny, great show. That's, no, I haven't. Um, I don't know if I'd do that. I'd end up <laughs> putting a bump on someone's head, I think, if they're telling me what to do. But go. No, who knows? French polishing. I love French polishing, but honestly, it's not a spectator sport, I don't think. It takes so long to do. It's fun to do. I enjoy it. And it's good if you've got a, if you're running a workshop and you've got a few people uh, there. I used to run weekend workshops doing French polishing and it, yeah, it was very entertaining. You get all sorts of jobs coming in and it was, it would test your, test your metal, that's for sure. Oh uh, dear, all right. Let's go. Don't bother trying to come in that door. You won't be able to. Come in the door, though. It's time we had it. Well, I'm just on this in the stream. As soon as I've finished, I will be up and we'll sit on the veranda like a couple of old people. Oh! I'll have to ring Bill up, give him some pointers. All right, where are we? Um, I went to turn and then the missus distracted me. Yeah. Oh, okay, let's go. I suppose what we could do, I, I generally do all this freehand, but yeah, this is what we can do. Can we? I don't know. Let's have a look see. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, really good.
And what I will do is aim for these because they, where are we? Yeah, we've got to make those at right depth and also those. Oh. Uh, now, see, it's good if you're actually doing a job like this restoration, actually it's a rebuild, um, because you've got the bits that came out, so you can just, you don't have to think. You just copy what they've done. That's good enough there. All right, so same thing. Put that in there. Oh, that's going to be pretty close to that. That's going to be to there. And to there. So we're going to do those. Now that one's pretty good. That one's all right. I'll take that off. And these ones, they should be there right. Okay, back over. We'll clean these up. No point in putting that in because it's all different angles and everything. Clean that up with a plane. Close enough. Lovely to have you on board. Um, thank you, Max, my protector. <laughs> oh, we have some fun, don't we? Can't laugh at yourself. You're not worth having, I reckon. There you go. That's all going to be good. Have a good run, Roy. Roy. Mate, lovely to see you. I hope you are well. Oh, now, let me see this. I could use that or I could use that. Oh, I might even use these. Might use these. Here we go. We'll just clean that up. These are be beautiful planes. But you need two of them because that's to go that side. And you need this one to go that side. But all said and done. Okay. Cheap with that. Okay. That one's done, that one's done, that one's done, that one's done. They're done, they're done. Now, I've got a square. Oh. 
the mortise is off. Yeah, that said before those um, ones originally they were slot mortised, and all the mortise and tenons were done by hand uh, by machine. So in this case, I slot mortised those, and you can tell they're round. But to get a good fit, I really want to have them square. So for that, I'll use one of my chisels, which shouldn't take too much clean them up Trent if you're watching mate love me chisels and look it doesn't make much difference to the aesthetics of it, but from a pride point of view, I don't know, you be the judge. You tell me, which do you think looks nicer? The one that's got rounded edges or the one that's squared? For me, I like the squared ones because it just looks, looks finished, looks more proper. Oh, we'll do a close-up of it. There you go. Here we go. If I'm on the line, which I'm pretty close to now, um, I'll use the flat of the chisel and just go straight on the line and straight down. If I've got a way to go, I will go back, so this one here, I'll come back from the line and start my cut. Because what happens is as you're going through, that bevel will force your chisel away. So if you do a cut out here, it will force you up to the line, whereas if you do that and you're right on the line, you'll go past the line. thought I'd throw that in there. And if you have a look at that, that's... Is that kind of focus? Thinking about it, there you go. See that? That's straight up and down. But, oh, I tell you what. We'll, we'll see how straight up and down it is. No, it can't because that one's not going to work. Oh, I've got this little one. There you go. That's pretty close to straight up and down for money. And it gives you a nice clean edge. So I'll clean that out. And the same here. So you can see that roundness. I wish this thing had focused properly. Okay, you can see that roundness there. I'm right on the line, so what I can do is I will put the flat blade of the chisel right on that line because I've got hardly anything I'm cutting away. And just go one, two, three, and is nice and square. Here you go. 
Hey, someone's playing up with this focus, isn't it? Anyway. Oh. Right, right, right. Right, you turn 40. Mate, I can't even remember when I was. Oh, yes, I can actually. Because we had a big 40th birthday party. And we had water pistol fights. There you go, second childhood. So, congratulations, Ray. Happy birthday. Uh, yeah, look, I've heard, I heard a great one, Ray. On a, it was on a movie. And it's, someone was playing up. And they said, why don't you act your age? How, no, how old are you? Oh, I'm 65. Well, why don't you act your age? Well, how can I? I've never been 65 before. So I think, I think that's good. I like the Ulysses bike, Bikers Group. Their um, slogan or mantra or whatever you call it is grow old disgracefully. Uh, let me just turn. This off and this off. Motto, that's the word. That was what I was looking for. Motto. <laughs> You're a gem, Max. You really are. Isaac. Hello from North Mexican Desert. Well, I don't know if it's hot there as it is here, but welcome from Brisbane, Australia. Lovely to have you on board. Thanks for dropping into the workshop. And by the way, if anyone's new and um, what we do, please hit the subscribe button. I've sort of bottomed out. Um, I would appreciate it. And if you hit the bell, then you get notifications that went on, on, which is really handy because I don't know what. There we go. We've got that one, that one, that one, that one. One more. So, Isaac, thanks for coming in. As I said before, who else is there? I'm not reading my phone. People thought it was a bit rude because I kept looking at my phone, but that's where the chat is because my computer's up on the wall and it's a bit of a minefield to get there. Oh. I'm hang on, I'm sure it's been four years. Oh, I have to get another emblem going just for you, Ray. I appreciate that, mate. I really do. I don't know. We might celebrate Bob. We might have a Bob's head in there. Well, I, I watched a show the other day with, um, I don't know, with Tannum Chating or Chatham Tanning or something or other. It was just called Dog. And oh, I tell you what, I, I'm not embarrassed to admit I had a bit of a weep over the black and white fella because I just missed you so much. But, and I tell you why this is going to be strange. I swear blind I could feel him. I was on the bed watching it, and I swear blind I could feel him on the bed. He's just, he was such a wonderful dog. But, there you go. Love to get another one, but the way the cameras are nowadays and vets are charging like wounded bulls, I'll, uh, I will forego the pleasure for a while, I think. Um, what have we got? Squared edges are more bad. Thank you, Max. They are. Anyone can make a round edge with a drill. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, now, I've got to line these up and see if they're going to fit. 
which is the front and which is the back. That's the front. So that means that one's got to be that one, which means it's got to be that one, which means that goes there. Oh dear. Where's the back? That's a back. That's a right. That means that one's got to be a back. Which means it's got to go there. Which means it's got to go there. Which means that's upside down. There you go. And that's how we will have it, I think. Where's a, a pencil? Oh, bit, of, bit of a sharpen. Oh, that's what I did do today. Oh, I even you know, I told you I had that new. Um, look at that. How's that for organisation? Actually put that, I haven't filled all the drawers up yet, but it's going to happen. I think there's, yeah, 60 drawers for $40 from Spotlight. All right, now if we can get this central, it'll be good. It's a time. We go from there. To there. I'm just trying to mark here. Get this. And here's a big word. If I can get this equidistant, it should should line up. So I've got to make that a little bit smaller, which means I've got to move that there. So that's okay. What I've done is is the tenon, there's some water, so I've put it on there and then I've marked equidistant from both edges, so that just fits nicely in that tenon, and then I shall cut them, but it's got to be cut a certain way. Look at it, it's turned up, and that's what I've got to do. It's got to be 90 degrees to the shoulder. Oh, where's my little one? Here we go. So I'm going to go. Oh, actually, 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 into wood. Yeah, Raph, if you're watching, um, I'll mark that down there, like that, and I'll mark down here like 
that. We'll put it in the vise. And see how I go. Always cut the outside of the line. That way, if you're going to be out, you're going to be fat, not thin. Here's Japanese saw flat. Just lightness of touch. side Here we go. This, this is the money shot. No, on the back one, back one, back one. Oh, here we go. So the front with back front. Oh no, no, surely not. Get confused. You know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out which is the front and which is the back. All right, that's back. That's front. So we're going like that. So that means this one has to go like that, and this one should be here like that. All right, like that. Goes in there like all right, that's how it's meant to look. Let, let me just double check this. If it doesn't, I'm, that's it. I'm leaving. I'm going to go and have a rest. Whoop. No, that looks pretty good to me. So, this one doesn't quite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this one. What are we on? Here we go. This one doesn't quite fit in. So what I'm going to do is adjust the tenon, not the mortar. <laughs> there 
and just very, very gently take a couple of passes off. How I'm going to do that? I have to put it in the vice. All right, so I'll just give them that a spray with water. And I'm just going to take a little bit off, I think. Oh, I'll try that one. Oh, I might need that. No, we'll, we will see what the best way to go. Eight passes that way. So I'll do eight. Okay, might have been one over eight. And then we're getting. Very close. It's getting very close. Like that sound. Okay. Starting to go in okay, so I've just got to find it, and I think I'll do that with a chisel. Where it's tight, if you just wiggle it, it should come out shiny. And I can see a shiny spot there, one there, one there, one there. So where it's shiny, that's where it's rubbing. So you just gotta just take those shiny spots off. 
and we should be good to go. Whoops. And I think that will be pretty darn close. Okay, now that bit there, that's just length in the tenon. So if I measure down, I was so focused on what I was doing. Yeah, that gap there, that's the length in the tenon. So what I'm going to do is see how deep I've got, there you go, and then we put that over here, and that's, oh what's that, 3 mil maybe, that's got to come off, but I'll get I'll a smidgen more than that off, because I want an area for the glue to um, rest if I put too much glue in there. So I've got about half a mil extra on that. So now if we just do that. And got to take that much off. But I did it. Just finding the fit, really. A little bit of a, just a little bit of a chamfer on it. On the sides. See how deep it is, that's how deep it is there. There, we might just play. yeah, I might just playing a bit off. Where's the old block? Whenever you're planing off something like this, if you're not chamfer on this corner, you won't get tear out or splitting. And I reckon that's going to fit. There you go. Well, it worked. Look, look at that. All my correspondence courses have paid off. Uh, now, let me catch up on the chat. Sini, yes, that was it. That was a good movie. I'm going to sit down for this because I can. Does this chair have to be? Yeah, I'll deliver it tomorrow. There's no dramas about that at all. We'll, we'll make it better. G'day, Ben. How are you, mate? Oh, I tell you what, are you using those lizards as bait the other day? Because they seem a bit small for the frying pan. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, well, that's going to be about it. Um, so you've seen how to fit those and cannons and mortises and use a daddo blade and everything else. So I.
happen because, because trouble and strife came down earlier on, I better go up and have a nice cold drink on the veranda with her. Ha, ah, um, yeah, look, I'll have this together today and then I'll, uh, what's tomorrow? I'm not sure if I'm going to be here tomorrow. I think I'll go and pick up a Rima for my, well, I'll tell you what I did get to, or a uh, Rima for my, 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 um, harps. But this just came today too and I want to play with it. Oh, where, there you go. Oh, I just got a new... New zoom lens from the camera. So that's, I'm looking forward to using that. It's a 55-140, I think. Where is it? Yeah, 18-140. Uh, so, oh, it's lovely. Because my other lenses, they, the little internal motors died on them. So I thought I'd treat myself for Christmas. Not only that, all Susie's quilts, we're going we're gonna to get a, um, Shopify shop, I think, and uh, I've got to take all the photographs for Susie's quilts and all the great stuff she makes. So I convinced myself I needed a new lens from the camera. So there you go. Um, that's it. I'll finish this today. I'm not sure if I'll be on tomorrow because, as I said, I've got to go and pick a reamer up from Harps. If so, if I am, um, I'll stream the rest of this. If not, I'll do it. Thursday um, and we'll put a coat of oil on it and see how it comes up. So that's it. There's one particular fitting I don't know if I can get. I might try and get that when I'm out tomorrow too. If Hayfler or one of the harbour shops have it, will be good. But thank you one and all for joining in and if you're new, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. For those, Ray, the long-termers, and I know Andy's been there a long time and Max has been there and if I've missed your name, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to. Ben's been there for yonks. Um, Jared, yep, no, it's all good. But in the meantime, this is Steve pulling the shed to a dome zone. Remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. And I've just lost another chook, I've been told. I'm down to 14 chooks now. Uh, I look forward to having your company in the workshop again very, very soon. Until then, good night, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. God bless. Catch you all later on. And if you don't catch you before Chrissy, have a great Christmas and Merry Christmas. And if you don't believe in Christmas, have a great couple of days off. So all the best. Catch you later. Bye for now.